Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be working on this Nintendo Switch. This has been sent in by a customer and it's been sent in because it's not reading SD cards. I believe the customer's already taken a look at this and they've noticed that there's a pin missing from the SD card FPC connector. So it's been sent in for that to be replaced and sorted out and hopefully get this thing working again. I have already noticed with this that the console is running custom firmware. I will say in advance I don't, do not deal with custom firmware at all. All I do is repair the device. I don't do any mods, I don't do any hacking, exploiting, anything like that. So if you need a repair, please feel free to get in touch. But if you need a mod, please don't get in touch because I will just delete the message. But anyway, that being said, if you're new to the channel, please don't forget to subscribe, turn on the bell notifications, all of that stuff. And also give the video a thumbs up if you enjoy it as well. You can also support me by heading over to Twitch, giving me a follow on there. And if you've got an Amazon Prime account and you're feeling really fruity, you can link it to Twitch and become a Twitch Prime subscriber, completely free of charge, but it does really help me out. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. Whether you've got a simple project that requires a quick mod board or you want to launch your own products to the world, PCBWay can help. With fantastic pricing on multi-layer PCBs, flex PCBs, 3D printing and even laser cutting solutions, you're sure to get everything you need all in one place. Custom PCBs start from just $5 for a one to two layer board with a fast 24 hour build time and free shipping on orders over $30. PCBWay are also proud to announce their new aluminium PCBs which start at just $120 per square metre. Check out what PCB way have to offer by clicking on the link in the video description or the top pin comment and get your project started today. Thanks again to PCB way for sponsoring the video. Let's get back to the repair. So as you can see, we've got Hecarty, which is custom firmware. Or well, it's actually a custom bootloader. It's not the actual firmware. But it's the, it's the software which allows for custom firmware to be installed. But that's not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is to fix that thing no sd card and there is actually an sd card in this so it's got a i think it's a 32 gig which has been sent along with it so obviously you know i can assume i can safely assume that this has got the firmware on it but it's just the fact that it's just not gonna load up because it's not able to read the sd card all right so this has got a mod chip installed like i said i don't deal with the mod chip i will obviously you know move it out of the way but if i ever had to take a mod chip off to get the console working then i won't actually put it back on i got the shakes pretty bad today as well for some reason uh, i've been up since 6 a.m uh well i went to sleep at 1 a.m and i've been up since 6 a.m because my nas i've had to basically adjust uh oh wow the connector just come completely off wow Okay, right, well, interesting. <laughs> There's no connector on there now, so this might need a little bit of trace repair. Yeah, um, I've been up since 6am copying files back over to my NAS, and it's still going to take another two days. So that's going to be fun. Trying not to bend the flex ribbon for this mod. Like I said, I don't, you know, I don't hold it against people for installing mods. It's your console, do what the hell you like. I don't hold it against people. I don't care. It's not my console. It's not my issue. But I just can't work on them. You know, I'm not against modding. A lot of people think I am because I won't do them. I'm not against modding at all. I never have been. And in fact, I've got some modded consoles myself. I'm not going to say which ones, but I have got some modded consoles. But the point is, as a business, you know, I can't really be making recommendations to people on how to mod the console and stuff because that's going to open me up to lawsuits and things like that and it's just not worth it for someone who runs a business i know a few businesses who are you know fully legitimate businesses and i'll just openly offer mod services and i'm just thinking to myself how stupid do you have to be <laughs> how stupid do you have to be to risk your business for the sake of you know earning a few extra pounds is it worth it in my opinion no let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you think it's worth it. Would you risk it if you were running a business? Or are you running a business? And would it be worth it to you for the sake of, you know, £1,500, whatever you want to charge? Because I don't think it would. Right, so, anyway, enough ranting about mods. One thing I've noticed, 
there's flux on this board. So he's had repairs in the past. And in all honesty, if the repair hasn't been on the SD card, which I don't think he has, I think it's been on the CPU, but if the repair hasn't been on the SD card, the reason that the SD card has failed, or the SD card connector has failed, is purely down to the flux. Because it looks to me like the flux has eaten away at the solder joints on the connector. And that's bad, because that means that whatever connections are under here on this CPU, it could be eating away at it. And the problem is, I can't really mess with the mod. I can't re-solder really it. So all I can do is just fix this and just hope that the customer doesn't have any more issues. Never mind. Let's have a look under the microscope. Let's see what we're dealing with. All right. So, yeah, it looks like the solder joints have been eaten away, to be honest, in my opinion. Um, I would say that that is purely down to whoever installed the mod. I'm going to be honest. I don't know who installed the mod. But whoever installed it hasn't cleaned up properly and it looks like that's what's caused the solder joints to end up breaking away it's not great it's easily fixed it's not a big issue you know I'll just solder a new connector on and happy days sort of thing but you know obviously if the customer paid someone to actually install that mod then obviously you know they've been robbed They've been ripped off. So I'll just replace that solder there with some lead in solder. Don't worry about the test points on the side. It's absolutely fine. And it's going to be as simple with this as just installing a new SD card connector. It's not really a difficult job if you're experienced with you know micro soldering and things. Alright, so I've got my hot air set at 350 degrees Celsius. I'm just going to preheat the area. It is very important here to keep the airflow moving at all times because we're dealing with plastic. So you want to keep your airflow moving at all times. Notice how I'm not letting that airflow settle even for a second. We don't want to melt connectors. I could do this from underneath, but it's possible to do it from this side as well, which is why I'm going to do that. Just to show you that if you keep your airflow moving, you can do it from the top, you don't have to do it from the bottom. Alright, so that's partially soldered. It's not completely done. I don't want to use too much flux here. So I'm at 1% airflow here at 390 degrees Celsius. Just keep the airflow fairly low. Give it a tap, make sure it's soldered and job done. So like I said, as long as you keep the airflow moving, you won't melt the connector. 
and it's the same for the connectors down here at the bottom as well as long as your airflow is moving you should be okay although I'm not going to take responsibility if you do melt your connectors you know that's generally going to come with experience if you've never done it before I would recommend practicing on some dead boards first and you can buy dead boards fairly cheap to be honest I'm just going to give these all a clean. So I'm using isopropyl alcohol with a toothbrush just to clean off the flux, make sure that we get everything up. And that is what should have happened with the last person who worked on this. Unfortunately, it doesn't appear as though that was the case. Alright, good. So, what I'm going to do now is just give all of these pins a little bit of a nudge and just see if we get any movement. I don't want to do it too hard, I just want to make sure that they don't freely move around. That's beautiful. All 16 pins nicely soldered. We can have a look on an angle as well. If we just get in focus, that looks good. And so does that side. Everything looks nice. So now that I know the solder joints are all nice and solid, I'm pop it back in the housing and give it a test. I'm not going to screw anything down, I'm just going to make sure it all works. Like I said, like I said earlier on, I've got to be careful as well because obviously there's a mod chip installed on this. I don't want to damage it because it doesn't need to be removed. I'll only remove the mod chip if it needs to be removed. So say for example if it ended up with a blue screen of death, I'd remove the mod chip and I wouldn't put it back because, well, like I said, I can't. All right, there's a couple of screws I'm gonna put back in. The reason I'm putting those screws in is because I can't get to them once the game card connect, uh, well, once the game card module is connected up. So I'm gonna put them in now because then if it does work, I haven't got to remove the game card module just to be able to reconnect them, or just to be able to put these screws in, sorry. Um, as I said earlier, the connector is stuck inside there. Let's have a look at that. Let's see what the actual damage was to it. Ah, yeah, okay, I see. So, yeah, one of the pins were missing from the SD card connector so that couldn't have been reused you can repair those you can put a new pin inside it but it's not worth it for the cost of them it's going to take you longer to repair it than it is to just replace the entire connector so yeah there we go that's what was that's what was wrong with it and then obviously the solder joints have broken off because they were weak because of the leftover flux or at least that's from what i can work out let's just make sure we've got no damage to the actual reader and it doesn't appear so it looks fine That should be okay. Okay, so I'm going to pop the SD card inside the reader. Just like that. And then just connect it up. Just temporarily. Okay, it's moment of truth time. Does it boot? Come on. Hmm. There we go. Okay. And there we go. Good. Uh, I'm going to cancel that for now. Launch. 
Uh, don't know which one to launch. CSEM MC. Is that right? It would appear so. Good. Okay. Okay, so we've got Minecraft installed. Not sure where my Minecraft game is, to be honest. Settings. Uh, where storage data management? There we go. Um, yep, there we go. Okay, so 29.3 gigabytes is showing up, which is absolutely fine. That is working as expected. I'm not going to test the internet because this is an exploited console. So uh, I'm assuming the customer doesn't actually connect to the internet. I can have a look and just see if it picks up my Wi Fi just to make sure. It does, okay. I'm not going to connect to it because it's an exploited console. I'm not going to get, end up getting the customer's console banned. That would be rather foolish of me. But yeah, that seems to be working fine. Just got to get this reassembled, which I'll do off camera. But the console's working. The SD card is working as expected. And this job is done. If you do need to organise a repair, get in touch. Consolefix.shop. Open up a support ticket and I'll give you a quote on a repair. Like I said, I will give this a full test off camera, but for the sake of the video, the job that it came in for is done and this console can live once again. If you do enjoy the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I would really, really appreciate it. Around about 65% of people who watch these videos are not subscribed. I would genuinely appreciate it if you do subscribe and bring that number down a little bit. But that's going to be it for now. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I'll see you all in the next video.